Hey everyone and welcome to Isms by Josie. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be crocheting today. For my returning subscribers, thank you so much for tuning in and for my new viewers, please consider subscribing, share, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and click on that notification bell for future videos. So I was asked by my best friend um, that I've known for decades <laughs> um, to help her out with something. So uh, she went to the dollar store and she had purchased this, um, it's called Crafters Square and it's a DIY um, animal kit. And, um, so I, I don't really get these things. I see them online and, um, they do tend to get, uh, complicated. So I'm going to kind of simplify how to do this. I'm, I'm going to do a sample of what to do when you get these kinds of instructions, um, just so that it's better to understand. So when you open this kit, you receive like some instructions. Um, there's a step-by-step -step on how to start this thing. And then um, at the bottom of this page, it shows, um, it shows the type of stitches that you can make. There's a chain stitch, single crochet um, stitch. Uh, and then in the second page, there's a couple more stitches, how to increase a stitch, how to decrease a stitch, and then it tells you how to put this little guy together. So what I'm going to do is, it seems pretty straightforward. Each step, each of these six steps is the same um, making, pretty much the same of making these cylindrical shapes, and they all start out in a circle. And depending on what each row says, so each row tells you how many stitches are going to be in this row. Maybe I should pick one that, okay, so I do have a yellow and a brown that I was going to do, but you know what, let's do one that has an increase of a stitch and a decrease of a stitch. So I'm going to try that, and mind you guys, this is the first time that I'm doing this, and I'm going to do it as the instructions say. I always like to try to see if the instructions match what's trying to happen here. So what I'm going to do is, all right, changing orientation, and I'm going to blow this guy up so hopefully you guys can see it. And we're going to start off with the ring. Okay, so hopefully I don't fail <laughs> because uh, my friend's counting on me to do this. I have my own way of doing things sometimes, so like if something doesn't really work out the way that I want it to, I'll totally change the instructions, but I mean that comes after years of doing this. So I've got my brown yarn here. And um, I'm ambidextrous. I, if I see an instruction and I don't feel like using, I guess, my right hand to lead, I just reverse. Obviously, you just reverse everything. But I'm going to just follow the instructions for the sake of looking like the instructions. <laughs> so what it's telling you to do, you want to hold with your thumb and your other fingers, you can use, I'm using my ring and my pinky um, and middle finger. So you wanna wrap this around your finger a couple of times. Okay. And then you have your needle. I'm sure this thing, it should tell you what gauge, the gauge is on the needle. I don't know if you'll be able to see any of this but this gauge is a G or a six or a 4.25 millimeter. And if you're beginning, you should probably start with a bigger needle um, just cause you can work with it easier. You can see what you're doing. 
Um, obviously, if you want it to look like the instructions, you want to use the gauge that they tell you. If they don't tell you a gauge, it looks like it's going to be a small animal. So I'm going to just use, like, I guess, kind of a small needle. I have big, I have way bigger ones than this. Um, and that's for, like, blanket making because <laughs> I don't like to take a year and a day to, um, sit there and crochet, um, a blanket. But anyway... So you want to hold the needle however you feel comfortable. Um, I find that the stitches are nice and loose. If you do hold it this way, it's kind of uncom uncomfortable, but it doesn't keep, like, you don't get tense when you're holding it like this. When I was doing this, uh, when I was starting out, I was holding it like this. And I feel that doesn't allow you to make nice loose stitches. It makes everything nice and tight. But if you're just more relaxed, you'll be able to pull out a stitch um, bigger than if you were to just hold it overhand. I don't know if that makes any sense. And you know what? Okay. All right. So step three, follow the instruction, hold the loop with the fingers, and uh, pull the yarn through the loop with two fingers on your hook. <laughs> I get the word, the verbiage here, but the photo, and this is a, as big it's going to get. The tail end I have here, and it wants me to poke through... Um, it wants me to poke through these loops and pull up a piece, but the way that it's drawn, you know what I mean? It looks so silly. So what it's trying to tell you pretty much, even though they have you starting like this, see, that's why I don't like instructions sometimes. So they want you to start out like this. If I would just hit the camera, start out like this. All right, pull the, go through these loops. And it's actually better if you remove it. So you see how on the corner here, they have you. And the way they've drawn it, there's no way, if you're doing this with your left hand, unless you flip it. So that just makes it complicated. But basically, they want you to do a double ring and a stitch around it, which is odd because I do it, you just need one, but I guess they want you to be taught. So let's just do it this way because long nails doesn't help either. So here's one loop, put around my finger. Here's another loop, put around my finger. Now you have these two, right? If you want to struggle that way, I never, you know, do that. But for the sake of keeping their double loop instruction. <laughs> okay. So you want to stick the needle through the loops. Now with the excess yarn here, you want to grab that and pull it through the loop. Peekaboo. Now you want to grab on the other side again, over the loops, and I hope you can see that, Let's see, and you want to pull through. And I don't like that because then now like you have what step four is, but this ring is super huge. I guess you can pull it tighter. Okay, I'm reading ahead because I know I have to have six stitches and I feel like this is way too big for six stitches. So let me do that again for you guys. If you ever pick this up at a dollar store. So I guess that's why they had you do it around your finger instead of two fingers like I did. <laughs> 
but okay. One, two. We're gonna put it. Uh, Okay, one, two, pin that down, stick it under two of the loops, grab the excess yarn, pull it through the loops, and you pulled up a stitch, grab some more, and pull it through that stitch hole you made. So now we have our starting off point. You can now remove this. And I like to roll this as many times as you want. Sometimes when I don't want to keep grabbing, no joke, I'll have like a big <laughs> like ball of yarn around my finger. Okay. So uh, we know that for this one, row one is going to have six stitches. So, let's go back here. Oh my gosh. All right, step five. Draw the working yarn through the loop with your hook like the direction of the arrow. So from this loop that we made, it's basically asking you to do a single stitch, a single stitch or a chain, sorry. Um, so from this stitch we made, which is this, I'm going to grab some more yarn and pull it through the loop. So that's a chain. Um, pass the hook through the loop in the direction of the arrow. So now we're going to go take our needle and we're going to put it through the two loops like that. Um, yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop with your hook like the direction of the arrow. So this part's easy. You just yarn over or grab the excess. I should have said yarn over, but yarn over is pretty much grabbing the excess. Pulling it through the loop and now you have two little stitches on your needle. And it says, now you have two loops on your hook. <laughs> yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops with your hook in the direction of the arrow again. So you're basically doing a single stitch now. A single stitch is when you stick your needle in a stitch, or in this case, a loop, and then you end up with two loops. And you yarn over and you pull it through both loops. So that's a single stitch. And now it says, now you will have one loop on your hook. So we're good, go we're good to go. <laughs> Keep pulling the yarn through the loop. Keep pulling the yarn through the loop in the direction of the arrow. Repeat the, so the short stitch steps seven and eight for six times. So it already knows you have to start with six. So this instruction on the first page is basically saying this is probably how you're going to start off because it seems like in this instruction each one, well each one where you start. So this crochet arms that times two, you have to make it twice. It's going to have start with six stitches the crochet legs times two you do it two times it starts with six inches the crochet head um it's gonna start with six stitches and this is um the body it's a continuation let's see crocheted ears this one is going to require 10 um stitches and the mouth is going to require seven okay Click that like button. Let me know if I should complete this whole thing. But I'm just going to show you guys how to start it off. If you do end up getting this um, teddy bear from Craft Square. Okay. So I got to repeat this six times. 
Now, what they don't tell you is some people will say that the first stitch we made is considered as one, or we pulled up a chain. Some people won't count that. So I guess you just have to look. I clearly see two stitches at the moment. I don't know if you can see it in your camera. I mean, through my camera. But when you do this yourself, you're going to see that there's two clear stitches that were made. So we're going to count that as two. So I need to do four more. So again, just do the same things. You stick the needle in the loops, yarn over, pull up a stitch, yarn over again, and pull through the two loops. So now we have three stitches. I'm going to do this again three more times. Oops. Okay. Yarn over. Oops. No, don't yarn over. <laughs> Put the needle through the two loops. Yarn over. Pull up a stitch. Yarn over again. And go through two loops. Okay. Two more times. Yarn over. Oh. Sorry, I'm so used to making a double stitch. We're doing singles, single stitches. Put the needle through the loops, yarn over, grab the yarn, pull up a loop. Now you have two stitches, yarn over again, go through two stitches, one more, go through the two loops. Pull up a stitch, yarn over, and grab, uh, pull through two stitches. So I believe I have six now. So this is why I don't like doing it this way, but I guess if the instructions tell you to. And look how different it looks. It has a nice tight, um, tight spiral. Listen, uh, I don't think it's really necessary to have two loops here. I mean, maybe they're going for strength, but I mean, seriously, who are you giving this bear to? So I don't want to have to just go to the next step and then leave this dangling. I have ways to hide this. I mean, you can pull it. I think you can pull it. Let's see if we can pull it. If we can pull it, maybe we'll call it a day. Okay, yeah, you can pull it. I wonder if that's a step. Let's see. Step 11, put the hook through the loop in the direction of the arrow. It's just telling you how to seal off. So, from our six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, you want to put the hook through the first stitch we made. And you want to put it through the two loops. Each stitch is going to make two loops and I'm telling you guys like when you do this in person you'll be able to see the loops. I mean I'm using a dark color. If I were to use black it would be harder to see but they're there and you want to put it through two because that is a strong hold on it. So I put it through the first stitch that we made which is the uh the extra chain that would be let me find it okay step five that chain we made it'd be nice if they said it like chain one and legit crochet books will will show that they'll have in like parentheses ch which is a, a chain and then steps six through step six through nine is pretty much a single crochet and they'll put in parentheses sc so i did this i'll step 11 put the hook through the loop in the direction of the arrow yarn over um okay so it's telling me to yarn over, 
and pull the hook through the loop. And I'm just trying to see if it's going to tell me to pull through two loops. Yeah, I have to pull through these two. So it might be tight from that first stitch we made, but that's, that's okay. That always happens, which is why you want to be relaxed. If you're a tight crocheter, you're going to have a hard time. And I think that first one I did uh, is tighter than I normally Okay, there's one, and we're going to pull it through this one. Okay. Step 13, yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop with your hook in the direction of the arrow again, so we're making a chain. We call this inner pull short stitch. Okay, so I guess they're calling it inner pull short stitch. Hmm, huh. that's very confusing. When you finish the first round, you could use plastic needles to put different or um, Use the plastic needle to put different color thread marking how you know how many rounds you need to crochet. That is a good tip. Um, so this excess here, which I don't like, like I said, you can pull this. See how tight that circle is? Just pull it. And that's going to make your ring tighter. Oops. I've never done it this way. But just for instruction purposes, we're going to do that. Okay, so what they said about a different color. Now, I didn't bring an extra needle with me, so I don't have a plastic needle to pull through a different color. But here I've got a different color. And you just want to mark off. So I'm just going to temporarily pull this out a little bit. The loop that, the stitch that we just made here, I'm going to stick it through that. Then I'm going to take a different color of yarn. It's short. I'm going to pull it through the loop. I'm going to hold down one end and I'm going to pull the other end through. So this is going to mark, um, where that stitch was it's going to be annoying but over time you'll you'll get used to it so i'm putting my needle back through that that stitch that we made pull it so that it's normal normal size all right 15. when you reach the last stitch on the last row When you reach the last stitch on the last row, cut the yarn uh, with about five inches to spare. Slip the end of the yarn through the stitch and pull to tighten the loop. Okay, so we're not going to be there for quite some time. So now we can move on to the other instructions. So we basically did the starting off. Each one, as you can see, is a ring. So this little guy is how you're going to start off every time. So that first page you're going to want to do um, six times or five times because this one's actually, uh, that doesn't make sense. <gasps> huh. Well, you know, because this is the body. There's some yellow. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Psst. Number four is a continuation of three. You can tell because it's row 11 and this one ends in row 10. Row, row 10. Jeez. Gotta love instructions. Okay. So I'm going to do number two. But basically row one, six stitches, we have that. 
Now it says row two, it's going to be six stitches plus three more. So um, I'll show you how to do that. And it doesn't even tell you like if it's going to be the single stitch you do, but I know that it's going to be a single stitch just from doing these um, a lot. So we're going to follow these instructions to increase and it, it doesn't even tell you where to increase. But I'm going to say, obviously, the last three stitches, if you want to make them even, Steven, we could do them, like, every two stitches. So that's going to be the annoying part. I'm just curious to see if it says it at all anywhere. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It doesn't say it anywhere. That is craziness. Okay, so just to make a smooth transition, I think after every two, I'll add, I'll increase. So, um, we pulled up a stitch. I'm gonna, uh, this is considered as one. So what I'm gonna do is like we did uh, making this ring, we did a chain. So we have our chain and now the next stitch I do, I'm gonna stick it in these uh, loops. And again, you'll be able to see them. They're very clear. There's two here, two here, two here, two here. Those are stitches. Each one here is a stitch. We have uh, uh, five left and we're going to increase by one, but each stitch has two loops and you want to stick the needle through both loops. Okay. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over again and pull through those two loops. So now we have two. Let's do. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's do um, the increasing stitch. You can do this at the tail end. I, I just, it doesn't specify. Um, and I want to. I want it to look even, you know, it'll tend to bunch and you'll see it'll be a little bulb if you increase in one spot as opposed to spreading it out. So to increase a stitch, <laughs> there's not even verbiage for this. Okay. So you just have to follow the instructions. So we're going to stick the needle in the same two loops that we did previously. We're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to yarn over again and pull through two loops. So I see what they did now here. So basically you're doing another single chain in the same stitch. All right, no biggie. Um, you know, this piece is bothering me. I normally like feed it through the stitches so that I can hide it, but let's just leave it how it is. Anyway, so we're going to continue. I have, um, five more stitches to go. So I'm going to stick the needle through the two loops, yarn over, pull up through the two loops, yarn over again, and oops, don't hit the camera and pull through the two loops here and you created another single stitch again. Stick the needle through the next two loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two loops, another single stitch. And because we created two more, we're gonna increase it by one so in that same stitch of two loops, put the needle back in there 
yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through the two loops, and that's the increased stitch. Then we're going to go to the next stitch, put the needle in there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull up through two loops. We're going to put the needle in again into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, and pull it through two loops. So now we have uh, to increase again. And we're going to stick in the same stitch that we just did. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over. And pull through two loops. So we did two, three. So you'll have to have nine stitches and just to make sure you just count them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now, So basically, to close off the ring, where we put this little piece of yarn here, we now have to stick the needle through those loops. Okay. Pull this different color out. We don't need that anymore. Want to yarn over. Pull up the loop. And then we're going to yarn over again. And pull it through the two loops. And from this point here, Again, pull the needle out with some while you're pulling the 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 yarn out, and we're going to put this in this little marker. Let me remove my. Okay. We're gonna pull this through the loop. Ah, it's so short. <laughs> Pull it through the loop, hold one end, pull the other end through, stick the needle back through the loop, and make the yarn tight again, not super tight around the needle, but tight enough. And then we're going to do row three, which is nine stitches now. So. This means that we're not increasing anything. So we're going to chain one. And then we're going to do nine single stitches across this whole thing. Single crochet. Sorry. Stick through the next stitch. There's two loops. It's just a stitch, but there's two loops. Sometimes they'll tell you just the back loop, the front loop, but putting it through two loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop, loop, yarn over again, pull up through two. So now we have two. Three. And I have to do this. I have to count out loud because I'll forget how many stitches that I do. Four. Five, six, 
six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And again, we'll have to use our marker and put our needle through the two loops. Pull the marker out. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. Yarn over again. And pull two loops. And I'm going to mark this off, but I just wanted to let you guys know. So because we did not increase this time, your circle is going to bunch. So they have this flat, but it's not going to look flat, but that's okay. Um, so if you had increased it more, it would be flatter. But in this case, since we did the same nine stitches that we started with, um, it's curling up now. And it's only going to get worse because in row four we have to do nine stitches minus two. So we're going to be decreasing. Oh, Lord. So, like I said, depending on how big you want this bear, so this is a leg. So this is going to be, you can kind of see already, this is going to be the, the roundness of the leg. So it's pretty, pretty big but it's tiny. So if you're not comfortable uh, working this tiny, then I would up the needle. It's gonna be loose fitting, but if you're a beginner, that's just how you should start. I mean, it doesn't even tell you what gauge needle you should use anyway, so um, I think it's really up to your preference. But yeah, so I'm gonna pull this loop out like we did before. I have my marker yarn here. Pull, put the needle through the loop and then grab that marker. Pull it through the loop, hold one end and pull the rest of it through that loop. Put the needle back into the loop and then pull the yarn to tighten it. If you lose your spot somehow, if you accidentally pull this marker out, you can always backtrack and try to count the stitches that you have done. I've had that happen a million times. Like the marker, I really like don't do so much anymore. <laughs> so trust me, there are plenty of times where I'll like stop or get distracted and I'm like, oh no, where did I leave off? And I have to count my stitches. So we're gonna do the, the decrease and we're only decreasing two. So maybe after four stitches, I'll do a decrease. Okay, so we make a chain and that's considered as one stitch. Then I'm going to go to the next stitch Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, draw through two, go to the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, oops, I messed up, it slipped off the needle and that will happen, so just do it again, put the needle through the loops, the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, Pull up through two loops. So we have two stitches now. Or three, sorry. One more. Okay, next stitch. Yarn over. Pull through two stitches. So now we have four. 
how do they decrease? Okay, so you put the needle through the next two stitches. Judging by the arrows in this illustration. And that's kind of pretty much what you do. Um, some people will skip the stitch rather than put it through two because it gets a little complicated. Okay. Yarn over. This time I'm going to pull it through the two stitches that we put through, that we stuck the needle through. Alright. Oh, that's not what they did. Okay. Let's undo this. So I'm just going to remove the work that I did. And that's why I like crocheting, because you can remove your stitch so easily. So now we're back to where we were. Strike that. Rewind. So what they did, you stick the needle into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up. Then you're going to stick your needle again in the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up. So now, this time, we have three loops. And we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. And that's how they decreased it. Okay. So that makes sense. I'm going to do another four stitches decrease and then do one stitch. So you should have seven stitches on your ring here. So stick your needle into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two. One. And this is where it gets, because it's curling too, this is where it's going to get a little messy. Okay, so that was one. Two stitches. Three stitches. So then we're going to decrease again. Well, that I don't, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing if the next row has to have seven, let me count back. This is where I have to count back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I already have eight. Okay. So maybe that's my bad. So because that's just one stitch you decreased. They want to decrease you. All right. Well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but this is an easy fix. So just count the stitches that you have left. That you have made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have an extra one. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Okay. When I did four, I should have decreased at four. Oh my gosh. Alright, so I'm just backtracking. Jeez, you guys. Okay, so that's the fifth one. Let's do it on the fourth one. Let's see. One, two, 
Siri, okay. Let's try this again. So on my fourth stitch. If you made it that far and you don't want to go back, you don't have to go back. But <laughs> stick it through the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, stick it through another stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and do all three loops. Pull up through all three loops. So now I have four stitches. And I have to make seven. And this is where the instructions are just not even right. <laughs> so, one stitch, two stitch. So obviously we have one more stitch to play and I'm going to decrease, uh, use the decrease stitch. So stick it through the next stitch, yarn over. Pull up a loop. Go into the next stitch, yarn over. Pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So I have seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So then I'm going to go back to the originating stitch where the marker is at, put it through both loops, remove the marker, yarn over, pull through two loops for that stitch. So then you yarn over again and pull through those two. Wow, this is tiny even for me because my nails are so long. Pull up the loop, add your marker back, pull through the loop, drag one end, put the needle back and tighten up the yarn a little bit. Okay. So, I guess you need a, I hope this thing came with yarn and stuffing. <laughs> so if the last two rows of the leg, we're doing seven stitches. So that's gonna be plain and simple. Uh, one row I will do again, calling out each step, and then um, the next row I'm just going to count the stitches. So you pull, um, you have your loop, yarn over, pull a chain that's considered one, and we're going to do six more stitches. Put the needle through the next stitch. yarn over, pull it through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops. Put in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Four more. Pull through, uh, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two stitch, uh, two loops, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. I have two more into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over again, pull through two loops, and one more. I think that's one more. Let me see. Let me count it again. Even with the marker. I don't trust the marker. Trust my counting. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one more. Into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up their two loops. And now I'm going to join from the first stitch we made on this row. Pull the marker out. Yarn over. Pull through the loops. Yarn over. Pull through the two loops. Okay, so as you can see, this is looking like a leg. It even has a little bump for the, the, the feet. So that's cute. We gotta do one more row. And look how, look how tiny this is, you guys. So, <gasps> maybe if I didn't have my nails, I'd feel more comfortable, but this is tiny. So if you're struggling with the size, don't worry. I mean, I feel that you can always change your needle or hope for the best. <laughs> uh, okay. So the marker again, pull through the loop, drag one end through, put the needle back, and we're going to tighten this up a little bit. And so now I'm just going to count the stitches this time, just because it's the end of the road here, and I just want to make sure I get seven down, even though like we have the marker and everything. I just, I don't know. We all have our quirks, right? So pull up a stitch that counts as one. Okay. We have two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, connect to the first stitch we made, remove the marker, pull the loop, yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. So now we're going to go back to step 15 here and we're going to finish this off. So what they wanted you to do, five inches of yarn. I'm going to cut it. And... I'm going to yarn over, pull it through the loop, all the way through, and we're going to pull it tight. Don't have to go too crazy, but just pull it to where it's a knot. So this is the leg. Now I'm going to guess that this is inside out because it was curling up over the good side, the side we were looking at. So, I don't even know how to push this. My nails are going through the loops. But if you can invert this. Oh my gosh. 
I can't. My nails. Let's try. Uh, let's try a nail polish bottle. What I'm doing, you guys, I'm just trying to turn this inside out. It looks crazy, but I'm getting there. Just flip this inside out. It's going to hide that excess yarn from the very beginning. See, I just rotated it. Thank you, nail polish bottle. <sighs> okay, so now this is inside out. I'm tucking in that little piece. So now I have my foot. How cute. And you can tell too because there's always going to be a prettier side than the other. So this is the leg. And you need to make two of these. So if this is a leg, you can only imagine how big this, this, this bear is probably going to be this big. But yeah. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. After going through the complicated instructions... But, um, yeah, so you do this, like, two times, you finish it off, um, you do arm two times, you do the head, and it looks like, see, it says keep crocheting onto the body, so you don't stop here, you continue on to rows 11 through 20, you know, and just follow the increase and decreases wherever it says, there's a plus and then there's a minus, and then the ears are sep uh mm. Yeah, the ears are separate. It looks like you're all making these circular socks with the exception of the body. It's going to be a tubular thing. Um and then it shows you how to put it together and you can pretty much just sew it together. And you're going to need uh, stuffing. And there's instructions that tell you how to sew these together and stuff it. I actually have stuffing. I've made my own puppy puppies. But um, give this a like. Uh, let me know if I should complete this whole thing. This is the little bear that it's supposed to look like. Um, let's show you guys again. If you go to the dollar store... It's Crafter Square DIY Crochet, um, and it includes the needle, oh good, it includes a needle, yarn, stuffing, crochet hook, uh, plastic beads, oh I guess you sew beads in for the eyes, um, instruction sheet, it's kind of cute. But yeah, let me let me know you guys if you've seen this in the dollar store. I think the Dollar Tree is where she said she got it. I'm very curious. Like I I haven't stepped in there. I see your guys' videos and there's all this nail stuff in there now. Um they're little uh we used to call them like giveaway things. They um or party favors. They're like glass figurines or vases or they're just tiny um, they've upped their game with that, and then I think last, I don't remember the last time I was there, but they have, like, all these snacks and food now, and tons of decorations, so Dollar Tree has definitely come a long way, but let me know, you guys, if you've ever seen this craft, Crafter Square, if you've seen the Teddy Bear one, or any other one, um, yeah, again, let me know if you want me to finish this, uh, that'll have to be a side project of mine. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Isms by Josie. Please share, like, and subscribe for future videos. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.